Hey guys, today we're going to kick off part two of this three-part series that looks at some of the more common issues we see when analyzing video for our remote clients here at RPP. Today, we're going to take a look at the trunk. This is just a small snapshot of the over 60 data points that we look at when analyzing mechanics for both our remote and our in-house athletes. With our remote, we'll be using video analysis only. Um, and with our in-house guys, we'll use a combination of re a video analysis and motion capture. All right, guys, let's take a look at trunk movement. Number 24, trunk rotation at foot plant. This is whether we're seeing if the, a lot of guys talk about opening up your front side early, um, causing that early rotation of the upper body. Um, we're looking on our mocap. We look at anywhere from zero to 10 degrees. That would be zero is pointing straight here. This is the plate. We're looking anywhere from zero to minus 10 degrees to create that nice torque on the spine. It puts the spine in a more compromised position to accept ground reaction force if we're coming around early. That creates ex excess flexion in the spine. By keeping the, the torso back while the hips are moving forward, it allows us some good tension and torque on that spine. That torque creates a much more stable spine to land and accept force and eventually close the gap on with hip and shoulder separation. Um, and like I said before, our mocap, uh, the torso should be between 0 and 10 degrees. A lot of kids will pull this open once again by flying open with a glove side. That'll bring the upper side around. Um, it could be core strength. Um, it could be a poor scap load, could be one of a number of things, but we analyze the issue and then we go back and we see what shakes free. Okay, let's get on to some trunk issues, guys. First thing we're going to look at is trunk rotation of foot plant. This um, can really se severely compromise the ability to utilize the stretch shortening cycle during recall. It also puts the spine and the entire upper body uh, into a compromised position to accept ground reaction forces when we're blocking with that lead leg. Okay, so um, these issues can be caused by early hip rotation, um, you know, setting the entire delivery off early, poor scap load, or maybe pulling with that glove side early. We're going to take a look at DeGrom doing a great job at ex uh, showing us exactly how it's done. Um, as he comes down, we can see right here that he's keeping his lower half closed till later. As he turns, it sinks up with that scap load, okay? That's creating that nice big stretch in his pecs right here. Okay, good scap load, opening up these hips so that by the time we do get to foot plant, he's got a nice coil to uncoil with and transfer force from that leg into layback and through the acceleration phase. It's really important to remember that he's keeping this lower half closed because if he came around too early, okay, he would start the whole delivery off early, okay? He's keeping a nice closed glove side. A lot of young guys will see them pull that glove side early and bring that trunk around early, and he's sinking up that scap load. As the hips come around, the arm goes back, creating that hip and shoulder separation. So when he lands, he's got that zero to minus 10 degrees that we're looking for. He's got a nice torqued spine to create a nice stable upper body to land from to accept this ground reaction force and to let it go into his delivery. Number 28, rotation perpendicular to spine. Max acceleration and efficient energy transfer best happens on a vertical axis. Um, if I could use an example of a, of a propeller, we have a propeller on a stem. When the propeller is being your shoulders and the stem being your spine, when they are perpendicular, you get a really good spin access. As that propeller gets a little off, it starts to wobble. This is, a, this is an example of what we look for when we throw. When we throw, we want our shoulders to be perpendicular to the spine. This also helps set up the arm slot. So for sidearm guys, we have it straight, we have an arm here, okay? Creating that 90 degrees as well, okay? Guys that are back are over the top, Guys that are low, submarine guys, we're always looking for that perpendicular axis. So no matter where it is, it will help us set up that arm slot and create um, efficient energy transfer up the chain. You can see here with DeGrom, as he throws, he's keeping his plane of rotation with that spine. 
Okay, so the next disconnect is, are the shoulders rotating perpendicular to the spine from foot plant through to release? Um, max acceleration and efficient energy transfer happen on a vertical axis. So in order for that to be effective, rotation should happen 90 degrees perpendicular to the spine. Um, this will also help set up the arm slot. Um, this would be a higher arm slot for more upright pitchers and a lower arm sl slot for, um, for flexion guys such as uh, submarine guys or sidearm guys. Uh, we want to watch the Grom right now as he displays a really good example of keeping this perpendicular. As we get the foot plant, we can see that he's got his shoulders pretty perpendicular, that T with his spine. This is key for creating max acceleration and getting it really great, um, getting great max acceleration rotation and getting great rotation like I um, described with that pinwheel in the prior slide. As he comes down from foot plant, we, he's going to bring his body forward into flexion and he's going to maintain this 90 degree perpendicular distance between his shoulder and his spine even though he's leaning forward all the way through into release we can still see that he's got this his shoulders and his spine are perpendicular this is giving him max acceleration giving him a great platform to spin from so here we have there's that T, there's that T, there's that T, like I said, all the way through to release. That shoulders rotate perpendicular to spine. Number 47, trunk forward tilt at release. This helps us create more leverage on the ball. This is exemplified by an athlete getting out in front over that front leg at release. It gives us a, long, a bigger leverage point on the ball, helps us stay on that ball longer. That can help us get better spin on the ball, whether it's back, whether it's down for more vertical break. And it also gives the pitcher an advantage and the batter a disadvantage by um, giving the pitcher more perceived velocity. The closer he can get to that batter before he releases the ball, the less time the batter has to actually re um, react to that pitch. Okay, um, it also helps the lat muscles absorb much of the decelerating forces of the arm, um, c assuming that anterior pelvic tilt is good and thoracic extension is good. Um, when we get out front, this will help the lat absorb a lot of this deceleration of the arm instead of the arm just slamming shut. Okay, number six, trunk forward tilt at release. This one, this is an interesting one because it's it correlates very highly to velocity throwing velo and it's not easy to do it looks a lot easier than it really is and it's something that we see a lot of guys um, struggle with um, of course we're not really talking about uh, submarine guys or, or, or sidearm guys this is more for the three-quarter and over the top guys um, but uh, the ability to get into this front leg and get this for as you can see Garrett Cole comes down at release okay he's got a really nice flat back okay he's out over that front leg you have to have a really strong anterior core for this and a really strong front leg to um, help support this trunk forward tilt but what this is doing is this is allowing him to stay on the ball longer Okay, um, it's what that's going to do is at release, that's going to allow him to come down on that ball harder, giving him better backspin, giving him a better vertical break because he can come down on that ball, and also better perceived velocity, okay, because the batter isn't seeing that ball till the last minute, and milliseconds count in something as fast as throwing and hitting. So, um, you know, the other thing is if Anterior pelvic tilt and lumbar stability and thoracic extension are all good. Um, this increased forward uh, trunk flexion helps ensure that the lat muscles are absorbing much of the breaking forces of this throw. So the lat is coming into play and helping absorb a lot of this without this arm having to slam shut. So a couple things. Really perceived velocity. Good leverage, late ball speed, good leverage on the ball, good spin, and um, really helps the breaking forces and preventing the arm from slamming shut at release. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. 
If you're interested in our training material on pitching, hitting, or strength training, you can reach us at rocklandpeakperformance.com or on Twitter and Instagram at rpp underscore baseball. You can also call our front desk at 201-308-3363 or email us at rpp at rocklandpeakperformance.com. Also, please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel on the way out.